friends! Welcome to Gemma Darling Daily. I'm your host Danielle and this is season four episode five. Of course it's a an episode I've been trying to... Um, I'm not at that fluent today. Um, I've been trying to podcast obviously for a couple months now and this is just what happens. You know it's like <laughs> so much has to go into me getting dressed every day right now and um, that really sucks because I feel really great when I have something on that I didn't sleep in and it just makes me like super super happy. So today the stars aligned and I got to podcast. I'm so excited. So what's really good about podcasting few and far between is I have so much to show you because I am a yarnaholic, shopaholic and those two things together, mm, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of colorful chaos. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say um, I'm really, really sorry to hear about the passing of Pearl Chin from Nitty City. I love her. I loved her. She was such a wonderful person. Um, every time you went in there, she had a big smile. She was like funny in her own way and you know, I really wish I had gotten to know her better and I just am so beyond upset. Um, her family was taking like messages from a lot of the people from the Nitty City community and reading them to her. And I was, I heard that you were able to do that the day before she died. So I didn't get to do it. And I'm really, really upset. Um, cause I loved her. And so I have a little clip of Nitty City. So I'm going to put that in here. I walked around a little too long and now I've got a whole pile of stuff uh, I'm buying here. Well, we'll give you 10%. Oh. Pearl. Great. Only today. <laughs> Only today. Don't get used to it. Special. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pay her now. And as you can see, it was really funny because she offered me a discount and then told me I could not tell anyone. It was like it was hysterical. It made me laugh so hard. I I literally came to the counter with like a whole bunch of yarn, and she was just like, "We'll give you ten percent off. It's okay." Just don't tell anyone. I was like, it's hysterical. And um, that was Pearl. I really liked her a lot. And I, I guess, as I said, I really wish I had gotten to know her better. So all of you that did know her, you're very, very lucky. And um, let's all support Nitty City because there's a huge community there. And I don't know what the family's plans are for keeping it open, but I really, truly hope that they try to because it's a magical place. So... All right, now let's get into some superficial shit. Oh, wait, we have a new president elect. <laughs> okay, last episode, I kind of showed you who I really am. That is me on a daily basis. I, I edit myself a lot, you know, when I'm in public or with people that may not share my views. And, and I really, I shouldn't because they don't, right? You know, people come into your face about Trump and about being conservative and all of this stuff. And so we have to start fighting back because we are on the right side. You know, we're the side that cares about people other than ourselves. And so, you know, my, making that podcast for me was really cathartic. And I, I really appreciate all of your wonderful, wonderful comments. I loved them. I lost so many followers. I've lost about three or 400 followers on Instagram since I showed that I was a liberal. And um, I mean, good riddance to all those people, but like, that's awful, you know? Um, I just, I don't want there to be such a divide in this country, but until we all start realizing that human lives are the most important thing, I cracked. <laughs> I had lost it and um, I'm okay with it. And that's the way I'm going to be from here on out. If something's going on that's bothering me or that I love, I'm going to let it be known because if you guys are watching me, you need to see me, you know, and, um, and I'm not holding my tongue anymore. Not while there are communities hurting, children going unfed, you know, like Jeff Bezos is making like a shit ton of money from this pandemic. Why shouldn't he pay my, like a lot of it in taxes? We pay a lot of taxes. Other people pay a lot of things in taxes. You know, my grandfather used to say, if you're paying a lot in taxes, you're making a lot of money. I'll just leave it at that. Um, this 
pandemic doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And that is because there are people that literally think you can take vitamins to keep yourself safe from COVID. I mean, I'm, I'm reading the weirdest things now. And as long as there are people that think like this, it's not going anywhere. So I hope you all will consider taking the vaccine. I do think that this incoming administration is going to vet this vaccine like wild. And, um, you know, I don't like vaccines. I do. I vaccinate my children because my mother tells me about how awful it was when polio was going around and all these things. And we have beat these viruses. So to not vaccinate, you know, my kids and myself, it would just be inviting disaster, right? So I do. Do I like it? Absolutely not. Shooting something into my body? No. But I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, we watch Outlander, right? And you know, when the smallpox are going around, she always shows that little thing on her arm that protects her while everyone else is dying of something that they, uh, like a virus that they solve in the future. And so we really need to start championing science because the people that work and have been working so hard for these past nine or 10 months have taken a novel virus and like dissected it enough to have a 95% um, efficacy is amazing, right? So I don't believe everything I hear on TV. I do like to listen to a lot of different things on the spectrum to see if they're all saying the same thing. But, you know, I just really think we need to to consider this. Otherwise, I don't see life going back to normal at all because people are still partying, having weddings. I mean, I understand everyone wanted to have little gatherings for holidays. You don't want to miss these things. No one wants to miss them. But if we don't lock down and stop it just for right now, we're never going to get to do that ever again. Like right now, it's like, oh, miss a holiday or two. Let's miss a Christmas. Let's miss a Thanksgiving just this year so that next year we can have it. And if we if we don't want to give a little, we're not going to get. We're not going to get our lives back. So that is how I feel about that. And I'm watching all these people outside, like ruin it for the rest of us. And, and that is what I think is really upsetting me about this pandemic. It's the blatant selfishness of a few that are affecting the many. And that is what's super scary about this. But, you know, hearing Obama say that they had a pandemic playbook and it was just thrown out, like, that is just fucking absurd. I don't understand why anyone would want this to happen to their popula population, even if they're like Trump, who was obviously trying to be our king. Um, why would he want all his people to be dead? I don't get it. I can't. Anyway, I don't want to talk about him. He makes me want to throw up my mouth. Um... <sighs> um, but we have a new president elect who is, he's not a perfect person, um, but he's done a lot of good in his life. And to pick Kamala as his running mate, who is a wonderful woman, and I trust their judgment. And, you know, I see a lot of people that are liberal like I am picking him apart. And it's okay. We are supposed to pick apart our politicians. They work for us, right? We're supposed to pick them apart. But the Republicans would literally stand behind a Chucky doll running for office, right? Like they say, okay, our party chose this person. Let's go die hard for this person. And if we don't start doing that, we are not going to win. And if we don't win, we can't do all of the good things that we want to do. So anyone who voted for Biden and didn't vote, vote blue across the line so that the senators would win in those states... Like, what were you thinking? Now we're so worried about Georgia. And so I'm like, my husband came downstairs a couple weeks ago and he just looked at me and he was looking at his phone. And he goes, I just gave a reoccurring payment to Stacey Abrams. <laughs> I was like, okay. He's like, because we need to win this. And I was like, yes, we do. So, you know, he, he, he grounds me. Even when I'm looking, I go, wait, what did they just say? And he'll explain things to me. And he's wonderful. And I, I urge you ladies, if you are not married, don't make excuses for the person that you're dating. If they are not on the same page with you, do not settle down with them. Anyway, I'm digressing. Do you guys want to talk about yarn a little bit earlier tonight? Okay. So I'm trying to find the notes that I made. Let's see. This is season four, episode four. Here we go. Um, 
as I said, I'm just really excited about this election. Um, was Biden my first choice? No, but I mean, he's filling his cabinet, the press corps, he's filling them with women. And I just, you know, I like that. I want someone who fights for us, even if it is an old white man, as long as he's on the right side of it all. I don't like some things he's done in the past, but I feel like he's someone who can, who, who will act upon the will of the people. That I feel like he will do. And so I am looking forward to this transition of power. We also found this was one of our most secure elections ever and so many people voted. Guys, that is fantastic. I mean, what is it like, like almost 160 million Americans voted? That's fantastic. Especially since in the last election, I think it was only about 120. That's a huge increase, guys. So congratulations, that was great. I hope we keep that momentum going. I personally really liked voting by mail. I like going into the booth. I used to take Franny with me. Um, and I probably will do it again when it's safe, but this voting by mail, our ballot box is still in our town. So I hope they leave it there and they use it for every election because it helped people that were, had, if you have to work on election day and you can't get there to wait in lines, vote by mail or go drop it in the ballot box. You know, it was really effective and I greatly enjoyed it. And I think it's really great to have a paper trail. You know, they're doing all these recounts, they have paper instead of like, oh, a machine may malfunction and your vote is lost. This, I mean, I'm just really happy with the way things turned out. So let's win Georgia. Anyone you know in Georgia, get them to vote. So many people have registered to vote that this is gonna be a really great race. So get the word out, guys. Come on. I have decided that Thanksgiving will henceforth be called Fancy Dinner Day. To everyone, I hope you had a very happy holiday. I hope you thought about the origin of the holiday and what bullshit it is. And I hope you donated to a um, an indigenous charity because they are really battling COVID right now and could use some help. And um, I did not make turkey. I know, I love turkey and stuff. Well, I don't really like turkey, but I love the stuffing. And I love cranberry sauce and I love yams and I love it all together on one plate. And um, I didn't really get that this year because my kids don't eat it. My husband's allergic to garlic and onions. So I was like, I'm not making it for me. So I made Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a long time ago, I texted my husband about it. I'm like, do you want Beef Wellington for dinner? And he's like, and it auto-corrected to Beef Welling Stones. I don't know why. And so... That is what we call it. So we had beef welling stones for fancy dinner day. <laughs> That's basically, that is my story. Um, so you guys know I'm friends with Christy Glass and I donate to her Patreon. She wanted to thank me. And so I guess Asylum Fibers offered her an advent calendar and I had not bought any and I was getting so jealous. Everyone was hanging theirs up and I was like, shit, I should have bought one. And she sent me one as a thank you for being her top Patreon for a lot of years. I think a couple years now, maybe. And um, I'm having so much fun opening it. So please tune into my stories every day. I have Franny, hopefully in a different set of pajamas. <laughs> we wear the same clothes to sleep for a couple days. I don't know what you guys do. We do, um, you know. This is not a pageant. She doesn't need to have a new outfit on every day. I do, we, she just gets dressed in the middle of the day and puts her pajamas back on. So you may see the same set, but I do wash my children. Um, <laughs> and she's been opening them and we've been having a really great time. So thank you so much, Christy and Stephanie. I really, really am loving it. Absolutely loving it. I hope I don't forget anything. I try to keep notes for like the month, month and a half that I don't podcast so that I have all this to tell you guys. I'm going to get to the stuff I have to show you soon. If you saw it was in front of me, <laughs> you would die. Um, I am actually listening to the house creak at night and I think that my attic is kind of like settling the house because it's just getting heavier and I'm like, ooh, I'm going to have to deal with that soon. Okay, let's see. Um, I became a Magpie Fibers Society member. And I don't know if you guys know, but Magpie Fibers has a society. I think that's what it's called, this Magpie Fibers Society. And it's pricey. It is my Christmas present this year. Um, but you get, they dye a special skein, two skeins, special colorways, 
every other month. So when you join, I believe you join for a year. I did. I paid up front because it was the cheapest option. And I got... I actually, okay, let me start again. I saw her advertising for it and I thought that the colorway, let me delve into this box here and show you. The colorway that they are selling for this, for, that they sold for like last month was so beautiful and right in my wheelhouse. And so I was like, I have to have this and I have to have 90 skeins of it. So what is all this? Like zippers? Where is it? I took it out. It's Ovi. <laughs> okay, wait. I don't remember what I showed you guys on my last podcast. So I may show you guys something I showed you already. Just forgive me, okay? I'm human. I've been watching way too much Shit's Creek because I just start talking like Myra. <laughs> okay, so they do two new colorways every other month. One is like a variegated and one is a speckle. And this is the variegated one that they had and it is like cranberries and browns and taupe and it is exquisite it's amazing um if you guys are in the fiber society it's number 15 i loved it so much um i don't know where they went oh here they are okay how many how many did they buy okay <laughs> um, this is only five. Well, there's one MIA. Oh, there it is. I bought six. So you get two as part of the membership, and then you have the option to buy extra skeins, which is great. So I have six of these, and oh my god, I just, I cannot wait. Throw me some ideas for patterns for these. It's a variegated, and it's exquisite, and I love it. So never disappointed in magpie fibers and we'll go into that in a moment um but you also have the chance to buy things that maybe were a one of a kind or maybe like they were dying a colorway and didn't come out completely right so they sell it as part of the society membership and i saw these these really deep chocolate chocolate brown and i just grabbed them and they are so luscious i mean i know you can't really see it it probably looks like a flat brown here but i love them and I think that they'll be like really, really nice in a Brio duo. <laughs> so here they are. Um, I'm just really, really excited about that. Oh, what did I catch? Okay. Um, I have been buying yarn like a drunken, drunken sailor, okay? Nothing wrong with a drunken sailor, except I've been one. So, and I cut my bangs and they're like real thin over here. Anybody else? Did your hair thin after you had your children? Because my hair is definitely thinning. Mm. Anyway, um, so again, with the Fiber Society, you pay up front, you get two skeins. You can either pick two of the variegated, two of the speckle, or one of each, which usually they're a really great Brio duo. And um, I chose two of the variegated. I chose two of the variegated again this month. And they should be coming. It's called Aurora Borealis this month. It's going to be so cool. And so that's that. And then part of the membership, you get 10% off Magpie Fibers for the whole year that you're a member. So if you want to do a sweater and you want a sweater quantity, you get 10% off it. And um, her yarn is really luxurious. So 10% is great because some of her skeins are about $34, $35. And so, you know, getting that $350 off it, it does make a difference when you're buying a sweater quantity. So I recommend it if you're able to, or if you want a gift, go for Magpie, the Magpie Fibers Society. I think that's what it's called. I should, probably should know these things, but I don't. And my earring's hurting me. Oof. All right. Yeah, you, can you tell I just cut my hair because I'm fiddling with it? Mm. Okay. Okay, so let's go into some like whips. I don't have an FO. I do, but it's downstairs. Crapple! Got the new pom pom. Hello. Look how beautiful this is. Look at that. Gorgeous. There's some good stuff in here. Great stuff in here. 
I like pom pom. I, I get it. And if I, I'll read it. And if I don't like some, like, if I don't want to knit anything into it, then I just sell them. But, um, my God, the photography in here is gorgeous. And a lot of the patterns in this are wonderful. And oh, look, there she is. So one of the reasons I really wanted this is because Gigi interviewed Adela and I want to read it. So I got my hands on this through Lola Bean Yarko and I just got it in the mail. It's a really, really beautiful one. Did she sign it? I love Adela. <laughs> That's great. So Gigi interviews Adela, and if you want to get the scoop, you gotta buy the pom-pom. So this is pom-pom quarterly issue number 35. Okay, next. Hmm. Do you guys know sometimes when there isn't a pandemic, I will teach classes at a little shop in Westfield, New Jersey called Urban Society. And I say society because it's urban society, but it's spelled so society. And I bought these really cute bundles. They send you these kits to make a project bag. So I thought I have the project bag stuff over there that it tells you the pattern and it sends you, so it sent, blah, blah. they send you all the parts, the felt, the interfacing, um, different fabrics, which you can substitute in and out if you want to. I think it's worth it to buy it for all of the interfacing and then the hardware that you may not be able to find and the zippers and things. And so, um, oh, here it is. It's called the retreat bag. Let's see. And that's the bag. I don't know if you can see it. <clears throat> And so it has these wire frames that kind of, when it opens, it just falls open. So I thought it was a really great project bag because it's not going to be all like fiddly and stiff. It'll just fall open. So I ordered two packages to make these for Christmas presents if I ever get to them. Um, really, really happy with these. And again, they're from Urban Society and they give you everything you need. So you don't have to go over buying, over paying. And then you get the class to make the bag and they have a virtual class. Um, so if you're new to sewing, no problem, guys, it's great. So go to urbansociety.com and check out their kits. We're trying to shop small here, right? Get off Amazon, Urban Society. I also bought this. I don't know why. I bought four yarns of this crazy fabric. I want to try to make a dress. You, you guys know how I love those spell dresses? Well, they're made out of nylon usually. Um, I'm sorry, they're made out of rayon. And so I bought some of this rayon. It feels so nice. And usually I like to work with, you know, natural materials, but I will make an exception because I love my summer dresses in rayon. They don't really wrinkle. You throw them on and it's like one and done, right? So I got this. So I will try my hand at making a garment soon. Or, you know, when my kids are 21 and I don't have to tend to them because this whole mommy, I want juice like 90 times a day is making me crack. And I'm not someone who complains about their kids. Like I love playing with my kids, but I am so sick of getting juice. Like so sick of it. Oy. All right, let's go into some whippus, whips, whippus. Okay. Um, the only FO that I have to show you are the letters that I made with the knit collage for Franny and Sammy's bedroom. I showed them on my Instagram. And I think they came out really, really great. Um, so this is Franny's F. And you guys know knit collage yarn is like so gorgeous and it has so many different uses. Um, you really can use it as an art yarn. So if you're doing like art projects and you need to like wrap something or you wanna yarn bob something in a beautiful way, instead of just, you know, with Scraptastic yarn, get the knit collage. I'm putting these in the girls' rooms because they sleep foot to foot. The room is like nine by 13, so the beds are six feet each. So since the length is 13, I just have a six foot bed and a six foot bed and they face each other, it's hysterical. 
And so these are going above their beds like Laverne and Shirley. Mm -hmm. Next, it's Knit Collage Cal time. So the Knit Collage Knit Along is going on and I chose to do a kaleidoscope. Um, which is normally a very, very busy sweater that each round I think you change your yarn so it looks like a mess of stripes that looks freaking fantastic at the end. It's just not my style and I knew I was not going to wear it. And so I decided to do a solid one and when you get the pattern it gives you the option to do it solid. So Boring Me chose this gorgeous, gorgeous mauve and it looks huge because it's double ply right now. I don't know if I'm doing the right size. It may be super, super big. It looks like really big, but when I put it on, it doesn't look so, so big. So we'll see. Um, this is it. What I really like is, do you see the zigzagging in it? You kind of see the zigzagging in it, right? It's like, do you see it? It's going like down and then goes down this way. Do you see it? It's really brilliant how the pattern is written that when you do the increase rounds, you'll do one of like make one right. And then when you get down a little further, it'll say do a row of make one left. And then it'll say do a row of make one right. And maybe I shouldn't be telling that, but you don't have the like. Anyway, you don't have the measurements. I just thought that, that was really great because it created this beautiful texture. Do I look like one of those things that like, you know, Coney Island? Anyway, so I have a good chunk done and this really only took me like two days, which is another thing that's so great about knit collage is like the way it's just immediate satisfaction. And so that's that. I have a couple more balls um, of the Spun Cloud. This is, I forget them, it's something mauve. Um, dun, 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 dun. Antique mauve, okay. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful color. And um, I'm excited to finish that. I have been working on the Gatsby shawl by Dawn Landix. Dawn Henderson writes um, under the name Dawn Landix, I believe. And I left the pattern downstairs. I can't stand myself right now. Anyway. Um, I am doing a little bit of knit miss, and this is for someone who shall remain nameless. Shall remain nameless. Um, and I'm I'm kind of in the middle of a row because I'm running out of yarn, and I wanted to show you the yarn that I'm using for it, which of course I can't find right now. Oh my god, could I be any more disheveled today? So this covered in fuzz is. Magpie Fibers Swanky DK in Empty Night. And the Swanky DK is a an MCN and it is so squishy and luscious. It really is. And what I like about this MCN is even though it's so soft, it's still a sturdy yarn. Um, it gives you the, the nicest, nicest drape. So it's really, really great for shawls. And it's quick because it's DK. But I just, I love this color. It's got blues and grays in it and like little bits of taupe. And um, it's knitting up beautiful. It, it's absolutely exquisite. I love it. It's a little dark, I think, for the pattern. Um, so maybe I should have gone a little lighter. I don't know if you can see. There you go. It's really pretty though. Um, so again, this is called the Gatsby shawl and I'm trying not to like lose my needles here. So basically it's a triangle shawl that's knit with increases down the center and out to the sides. But when you get down to the bottom, you can't really see it yet because I have to block it, but it has this whole motif um, with bobbles in it. Can you see that? There you go. So um, I just, I'm just finishing my last row of that and then I have a little bit of stockinette and then binding off and it's an I-cord bind off so it should take me nine years but hopefully I'll get it done for Christmas or you know we have to do everything early this year because I have to send it because we're not having a Christmas together. So I think it's coming out great and um, again you can see how I have stitch markers it's a 12 stitch repeat and so I put stitch markers every 12 stitches and then 
What's really great is when your toddler comes over to you and grabs your knitting and pulls it away, um, just to be playful and cute, um, if you drop any stitches, you know, in between those two markers, if you're only counting 10, you drop two. So it's great when you're doing a shawl, I do it even with sweaters, anything that has a repeat in it, put the marker in. Make them removable markers so they're easy to move if you have a problem. These markers are great because they don't go under the stitches. So I use the little pin bulbs. I call them pin bulbs. They look like light bulbs. Um, you can get them on Amazon for like, like a thousand of them for like 10 cents. <laughs> That's a little bit overkill, but you know what I mean. Um, I have a pouch of them Wait. that I ordered. Oh, too many bags. Bag lady. Okay, let's see. I do have the thing, I'll get them. I'll get it out in a second. This is the Gatsby shawl. There you go, can you see it? Really, really great. Um, Dawn Henderson, 2019, Dawn Landix. So if you guys wanna take a stab at it, it's great. Um, I think it was written for a fingering weight yarn. And all I did was go up a couple um, needle sizes I don't have the stitch markers. Oh, here. There's my lip gloss. Damn. I'm a mess. Everything is in bags because I'm living in the house, and never leaving the house, and just taking it all around with me. This is the bag of stitch markers that I bought off Amazon. I don't remember how much it is, but it was not expensive. And it has black ones and silver ones and gold ones and then that drab gold, bronze, whatever, drab gold, <laughs> fake gold. And um, I use them in everything. They're great. So I'm just finishing my last row and um, of pearl back and then I get to do the end of it. And I'm excited because I really want to see it blocked out because I've been using a 60 inch cord and you know, cause that goes along the V. It's not actually the wingspan of it, but I want to see how big it gets. It's going to be big anyway. I really like this knit so much that I started another one. Um, I think I showed the, you guys this last week. I started it in Asylum Fibers in their Forbidden colorway. It's got purples and oranges and like magenta and I think it's really, really cool. So after I'm done with that, this is gonna be my project that I knit when I'm watching the kids because it's so, it's so easy until you get to that bottom where you have to think. And I'll just do the bottom while I'm watching TV at night when they are PTFO'd. So again, I changed it to DK. I have to see. Though I did use a, si a needle size down, like a ne bigger needle for the DK in the Asylum. This uh, I think is an eight. Yeah, and I'm using a seven for the Swanky DK. The Swanky DK is a little bit more refined um because i think it's because it's an mcn they're not as bulky as a full merino and this is a full merino so never disappointed with asylum fibers her use of color is spectacular it's fantastic so if you're looking for something super colorful and really saturated go with asylum stephanie knows what she's doing did anyone do the knit and escape this weekend um christy had her retreat that was it was going to be such an expensive retreat. It was going to be amazing. I just, I didn't budget for it. So I wasn't going to be going. And then when it went online, I was so excited because I got to take two classes. Um, I took knitted jewelry with Suzanne Somer. You guys may know her as Sosu, Sosu Knits, S-O-S-U. And then I took Casa Pinka, you guys know Bronwyn, she did something today about like color theory and picking things for shawls because sometimes it's really hard. You say you want to do a shawl and you need like, you know, four skeins that are complementary and you have to place them in the right, you know, this is skein A, skein B, and if you don't place them right, you're not going to like it. So she taught us how she does it. It was great. So that just ended because I'm, I'm filming this on a Saturday night. And so that had just ended. Um... And I loved it. I thought it was really, really great. So, I mean, next year you can go to it. I just, you know, I'd, I'd love them to do it again virtually. I think it's great because these virtual events, even though we're doing them because we're all stuck inside and we can't like, you know, social distance at these big events, um, 
I'm liking that people from everywhere are able to participate, like all different countries where they wouldn't have been able to do that if they were coming to the actual retreat. Um, I still obviously want to start going to things, but if this is the way we have to live for a little while, I'm not upset with it. It was really, really great. I finished Franny's floor shawl. So that I forgot downstairs. It's adorable. She wanted one. She never wears it. Um, maybe she will when she gets a little bigger and then it will be too small. So that's cool. Okay. Uh, so um, while I'm thinking about a Brio duo, should we look at some yarn? Okay. Um, oh, I know. Let's talk about something that I want to do. It's called my on deck project. So do you guys ever have projects that you're like planning while you're finishing another one? It's called your on deck project, your ODP. Okay. So we're going to look, I think I shove this stuff under this chair. Let's see if I can get it out. <laughs> All right. No, relax. This podcast is far from over. Just relax. Okay. Thanks. Um, Franny and Sammy live in a room that I have painted pink, not like the pink up here. It's more of like a dusty sandy pink and it's really, really light. It actually was in the whites when you look for paint. Um, usually they have all the colors separated, but there's a white section and it will say these are red whites. These are blue whites. These are green whites. And they're basically talking about the tint that it gives off. And what I chose for their room was a red white. So it basically was the super, super light, dusty pink. It was like a jog of white with like one little drop of red in it. And it's beautiful, but for the life of me, I cannot match it to any comforters for the life of me. So um, I bought a really pretty rug, a rifle paper company, like pink rug to go in the room. And a lot of the stuff is like browns and pinks and reds. Cause there's some embroideries that my mom made for my sister and I, when we were little and it's like the numbers and the letters and she, it took her so long and they're so beautiful. So I want to put those up in their room. You know, Franny's only four and a half and I'm still doing her room, but okay. You other people that have got it together, I am so jealous of you. You have no idea. You're welcome to come to my house anytime when there's no virus outside. Anytime, come do my rooms. So I have started putting yarn aside for her, um, which is actually why I've been, I've been buying like a drunken sailor because instead of trying to make her, to buy her a, a comforter, buy Sammy a comforter, I'm just gonna make them granny stripe blankets. We tend to use those blankets that are from Home Goods that are really plushy. Um, I don't know the brand, but like they're so soft and they're so warm in the winter that the girls are under them. And we have like steam heat in this house. It's a really old heating system, but it's really good. And the house is warm. So I don't think they need anything as if they're sleeping outside in the dead of winter. So with that being said, I remembered that I had bought this really, really cool Mad Tosh from Chelsea Yarns. Um, I think this was back in like February or something or January. I don't remember, but it's got this like iridescent to it. I don't know if you can see it. It's got iridescent um, Stellina to it. And Franny loves this yarn. So I have four skeins of this and I was like, okay, this will be the base of her blanket. Um, now I'm also going to put some subtle greens in it, like maybe one stripe of green here and there and some browns, but I also wanted some hand dyed yarns. Um, so I went a little bit apeshit. Um, first of all, I had this in my stash. This is Heart of Glass by Magpie Fibers. Um, this is their singles and it's this, you know, it's like a cream color, but it has pinks and browns and some good stuff running through it. So that's in, that's in there. Oh, I forget the name of this. This is Damnation by Hedgehog Fibers. This is one of the original five Hedgehog Fiber skeins that I ever bought. And I own a lot. So, um, I was making an outline shawl. Beata designs a lot of really beautiful shawls and they are free on hedgehogfibers.com. And I just never got it right. I just never got it right. I think that was years ago where I really had to think about everything I was knitting and Franny was so little that I couldn't do it. So I just frogged it. Um, I don't remember what this colorway is. This one came, 
I bought them at the same time, but this is going to go with that also. It's very woodsy colors. Um, so they're, they're a good Brio duo there. We, we got a lot of Brio duos today. Why limit yourself to just one? <laughs> anyway. Um, then I bought, I think I showed you guys, I bought a bunch of machete shop, you know, um, minis. I think I showed these to you guys last time. So like this rust one's going to go into it. And then, um, this one that has like a lot of the deep purples and rusts together, that'll go into it. So I'm kind of keeping it like magenta, a little bit of like pinky reds and, um, you know, like this from Cake Wool. I love this one. It's called Birthday Cake. Um, and so that's going to be her blanket. But I have gone, as I said, totally apeshit buying things that I think will go into it. And let me show you some of the stuff that I got. Um, this is called Mulled Wine by Machete Shop. And I really like it. I know that like there's a lot of problems right now with getting the normal yarns that dyers use. I think they all use like a lot of the same suppliers and there's a shortage. So they're trying out new bases and I am not hating it. I really, really love the mulled wine. So I have a bunch of skeins of that. Um, this one is called Teak. That's a really cool like rusty color. Um, then I got one that has both of, this is basically goes in the middle of these two. See? And that one is called Autumn Gold. Look at that. That's really cool. See, that's what I'm going for. Like the browns with the cranberries. So basically I'm going to finish this blanket and then tell Franny it's for her and she's going to be a four year old, right? And tell me she doesn't like it so I can have it. Thanks. Okay. Um, what else? Um, this is called Cinnamon Spice, because I knew I needed some, like, with, like, a white base to them, but it's still speckled. So most of the ones that are speckled are on the white bases, and the ones that are, like, variegated, I kept them simple. I didn't get any, like, dark speckly ones, even though it's going to be crocheted, and crochet is kind of very forgiving when it comes to speckles, because, um, everything is very, like dense when you crochet you know you don't really just see the strand of yarn like you do when you knit so um this one's really cool it's called landslide we all know that's from stevie nicks and fleetwood mac but it's really just it's really just stevie right i love fleetwood mac but it's really just stevie yeah okay as long as we got that straight so this one's called landslide and, um, oh no, I am not done yet. Um, this one is called Cabin Vibes. So this one's kind of cool because it's got like some plumminess to it. But look at that. Oh, so good. Um, and I got like a pink to be like a grounded base, you know, just a, like a plain stripe here and there. But still light enough that it adds beauty. Um, another autumn gold. Oh good, I got two of those. Yay. And then I got this one. It's called Heirloom Tomato. I don't know if it's going to go with it. Um, I may stay with the magentas because I think if I put too much like red into it with the greens, it'll start to look like Christmas. But I just, I don't know. I'm going to have to go with the flow. And you know what's really easy is that with crochet, it's so easy to pull out. If you don't like a color, you just pull it out. So those are my machete shops. Um... I did get some more minis. I got two of her holiday mini sets. These are 10 gram skeins instead of 20 gram. Um, and I got two of them and I love it. This is called, they were, it was like a Thanksgiving dinner inspired. So this is called green bean casserole. I love this green. I love it. It's great, right? Another green. I have another green there I might use. See, that's why it's good to keep your yarns in apothecary jars people. You can see it. Oh, look, I'll use this. Oh, look, I'll use that. You're welcome. Yeah. Go to Tar Target Glass Isle. Okay. Get the big jars or go to Home Goods. Get the huge vases. And you're just like, what would anyone ever use that for? Well, put your yarn in it. <laughs> okay. So this green bean and here's a red cranberry, obviously. 
Um, this one is called Pumpkin Pie. And this one is called Basting the Turkey. That'll, this'll look nice in it because we don't have any golds yet, right? So that'll look nice in that. And this one is called My Favorite Sweatpants, a very pandemic colorway. And then this one is called All the Stuffing. And I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> I think stuffing is delicious. I do not think it looks delicious. <laughs> but, I mean, I think Brittany from Machete Shop knows I'm a very, very big fan. Because I think I paid her mortgage this month. But, um... <laughs> we like what we like, right? I did score some Vulan Vine today. I can't wait to show you guys that on the next podcast. I'm, like, so excited. Um... Okay, so after I had a conniption and bought all of that, do you guys know the word conniption? My dad uses it like all the time. Um, <laughs> oh wait, there's more. Did I buy this machete shop? Okay, wait. This one is called Elderflower. It's got like greens in it. I thought that was really cool. And this one is called Blueberry, and this is one of my favorite colorways of hers, and it's not even in my wheelhouse. I don't know that I'm going to be using, like, blues and things in hers. I may do Sammy's, and I think Sammy's blanket is going to be a lot more fluorescent than Franny's. Just to be different. Um, so, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the company Artemis Yarns, and I believe, I think it's in France? I don't know. I'm so bad. ArtemisYarns.com. Um, I saw this skein and I had to have it. So I think that Sammy's blanket is going to be more pinks and purples and blues. Though I may ground it all with like a gray or a brown. I'm not sure. Um, oh, I found another one. This is Tula from Machete Shop. That I actually knit a Rhinebeck sweater out of this. My um, Tecumseh, if you remember. So that's going in Franny's. So I bought, oh wait, another machete shop. I swear I paid her mortgage. <laughs> um, August Fog. That's cool. I mean, this one's like dark enough that this may go into Franny's just to add a little contrast. Man, there's like a big mess below me. This is so much fun. Who knew? I mean, did you even know that when you were like a little girl, you would be knee deep in yarn and that would bring you happiness? I did. I think I've told this story before. When I was in college, obviously the drawers of my bedroom were empty because all my clothes were at school with me. And my sister went into the bedroom one day and said like to my mom, can I put some of my stuff in Danny's room? She's at school. So, you know, it's no big deal. My mom was like, leave her room alone. It's her room. My mom and my sister goes, mom, she has a drawer full of yarn. And my mom was like, okay. <laughs> You can move the yarn and put your clothes in there. But I was in college and I already had a drawer full of yarn. So I think I should have known this was coming, but I had no idea there was this whole community out there. I think I was pregnant with Franny when my mom taught herself how to knit, or maybe it was a couple years beforehand. And she was telling me about the community. She was telling me about the Vulanvines podcast and all this stuff. And I'm like, mom, you're crazy. Like, I don't want to knit off a pattern. I just want to knit in the round, leave me alone. And then, you know, when I was pregnant with, with Franny, this was like years ago, I started watching Vulanvines podcast. Of course, like to know her is to love her. And, um, that was that. Then I think Chelsea and Sue started podcasting, and then my mom dragged me to a store to meet Vool and Vine, and Chelsea Sue was there. Chelsea and Sue. Chelsea and Sue. Chelsea Sue. <laughs> they were there. I met Shamika. I met so many people. And then I just fell into the rabbit hole, but it's a great rabbit hole, guys. You are in a great rabbit hole with me. So Artemis Yarns, right? Artemis Yarns. Beautiful. So I got a bunch of this. Um... But I got a bunch of their minis, and I, I mean, these are freaking gorgeous. Look at this. Unbelievable, right? Yes, they're made in France, died in France. That's what it says. It's called Happy Day. And let's see, what else? This one was a half skein. Gorgeous. This is also Happy Day, so I don't know why I bought a skein and a mini. But, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> this is called Rose. 
Let me fold them in half. Is this better to see it that way? Um, this one's called Freshwater. Is it blown out? I hope it's not blown out. Is that better? I didn't do very good with the lighting today. Um, what else? T -t -t -t. Lagoon. Kind of like Happy Day. Lagoon. Enchantress. Yes. That's a good name. Uh, I don't even know where this came from. I found it. I don't know where it came from. It has no label on it, but it's beautiful. And then Glory. So, no, I'm not done. I swear I'm not done. Like you, you guys have no idea what is in front of me. You have no idea you would die. So that is my Artemis yarns. And as I said, that is probably going to go into something for Sammy. Um, I have a couple more things to show you. Let's take a break from the yarn for a second. Um, there is a website. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what the website is. Oh, well, it's not on your invoice. Oh, okay. It's called Sophie and Lily. And I follow them on Instagram. Um, if you're not a total liberal, don't even follow them, okay? She is super liberal and she's fan freaking tastic. So she's an artist that makes all of these drawings. Um, and so I bought these cut and sew dolls. And you know what? Let's show this one. I, I bought three of them. One for each of the girls and then one for a friend that I'm going to make it for and send it to her. And once I show you what I bought, she will probably know who it is, who it's for. Because I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, they come to you like this. Two pieces of fabric. And you literally just cut out the doll. You know? Put the wrong sides together, sew it, stuff it, and put it together. This is a young Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Um, I thought one of the girls would really like it. See, she's got her collar on. She's holding her gavel. So there's that one. Um, I'm going to just put them back because I want them to, the fabric to stay nice. But it's literally a cut and sew. And then this one... I think that one's going to be for Franny. This one will be for Sammy. But I love Frida Kahlo. Um... Isn't that adorable? So it comes, that one comes with a red back. Okay, this one is for a friend. If she is watching, she may know that this is for her, even though she does not know it is for her because we both love Stacey Abrams. Look at little Stacey! I'm so excited. I need to sew this and get it into the mail for this person. She and I just gush over Stacy. Obviously, I love Kamala, but I was, I did want Stacy to be his running mate. And um, it makes more sense, obviously, to choose a senator, but anyway, it's a cut and sew. So you just cut it out, stuff it. That's it. It's, it's really great. And so... I'm going to be doing those. I don't think they should take me very long, though. They're pretty simple. I remember, I don't know if you guys are children of the 80s, but they used to make these in Care Bears. I don't know if any of you had that. They would, you would buy cut and sews. So, again, that is, um, let's see, Sophie and Lily. So if you're interested in making anything for the little women in your life, go for it. Um, she also has a lot more than that, and I have bought, you know, like, eight by 10 drawings of hers for the girls' rooms. One says nasty women and has all different pictures of the wonderful women in our government that are trying to block all these awful men from doing things to us. Um, and so I bought a lot of that for the girls' rooms and I just have to put it all up. So, all right, we're trucking. We're getting towards the end, guys. Stay, stay sharp, stay sharp, get a coffee. Stay sharp, we're going. Okay. Did I show you guys this on my last podcast? I feel like I did. I ordered this from overseas, um, Black Elephant. I think I showed you guys this last podcast, right? I didn't put anything away from last podcast. This is called Cassiopeia, if you haven't seen it. So there you go. Black Elephant, Petra Black, beautiful yarn dyer. I met her at EYF. 
She gifted me, if you guys remember, some of those orange skeins last year, and I have to do something with them. They are freaking gorgeous. Oh my god, they're so gorgeous. And I need to use them before Gigi comes over and steals them. Mm -hmm. Did I show you any of the Chelsea yarns that I got? I don't even remember. I don't remember what I put on the last podcast. Did I show you, I show you any of the Toad Hollow? I think I did. This Toad Hollow, I love. She sailed across the ocean. That is beautiful. And then, you know, Christina from Chelsea Yarns kills it. She's amazing with the Chelsea Lux. So these are also going to go into um, Franny's blanket. Yes, I bought enough yarn to make blankets for every kid in the world. So if anyone wants to grab a crochet hook and pull up a seat. <laughs> um, this is called Privet Fairy from Toad Hollow. Guys, look at that blue. I mean, that is beautiful. That is just beautiful. So as you can see, I have lost my mind and um, I've just been buying, look, I mean like mini skein sets. I love Toad Hollow guys, Toad Hollow. Those ladies are so sweet. Two sisters with exactly the same taste. They really do. They have like very similar, they love the same things. It's wonderful. And I love my sister, but we are like night and day. So I wonder what it's like having a sister that has the same interests as you. Do you guys ever see that movie, 10 Things I Hate About You? I think I said this the last podcast. Yeah, she and I, I am the older sister who likes tea and Shakespeare and she loves her Prada backpack. So that's what I grew up with and I wouldn't change it for the world because my sister is wonderful. We're just not like on the same page, <laughs> but I'd beat anyone up for her, I promise, yeah. Though I'm pretty sure she can handle herself because you know, yeah, she's tough. This is gorgeous. What am I going to do with this, you guys? What am I going to do with it? It's not enough for a sweater. It could be an amazing shawl. I don't know. See, my problem is I'm drawn to yarns like this, right? They have all these colors, but then you have to choose a simple pattern, right? Because otherwise, if you choose anything with like yarn overs or lace, it just looks batshit crazy with this. So throw some pattern ideas at me on Ravelry, whatever, um, because... Well, you know what, guys? I'm going to be making a granny stripe blanket till the end of time. So I don't even need pattern ideas because I feel like I've just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm not excited. Um, looking around, looking around, looking around. What haven't show you? Oh. <sighs> guys, I love Alyssa from Cakewell. And I know I talk about her on every podcast, but she is such a gentle wonderful, beautiful soul. And I'm so happy that our paths crossed in life. And as I am with all of my fiber friends, like if I didn't like knitting, I really wouldn't know most of you, which is just an awful thought. But she sent me, well, let's start with the minis because I ordered a bunch of stuff. And then she sent me this cute bag with a bunch of minis in it. It had candies in it. I mean, I look at this. I love the soft manner of her, of her colors. I love them. It's, it's real beauty. And I, I don't say that lightly because, you know, I don't look at, I look for my yarn to be beautiful, obviously, and have the colors that I love. But when I look at her yarn, it's like ethereal. It has a real lightness to it. And I, I just love that. I love the manner of that. So I may steal some of this for myself. Um, Cause you know, I'm going to be making a granny stripe blanket, so. But I bought some of these. Should I take it out of the crinkle packaging? I mean, it, look at this. So she put these four skeins up and she couldn't figure out why they weren't selling, but she hadn't put them up on her shop. She put them on Instagram and I was like, they're not in the shop. So I just bought them. And then there's this um, really, really pretty, I think it's like a super bulky in this pink. Oh, I love it. Oh, wait, no, I'm not done. Um, I got a second set. So the, this is for Franny's blanket and this is called Bambi. It's a really, really like a taupey brown with speckles. And then this one is called Heartstrings. Can you see that? This is pink is just my wheelhouse. I love it. And I know crinkles, I'm sorry. Um, I am floating, 
floating in yarn right now. Oh, do you guys want to see what I got for Pearl Soho? Hold up. Okay, so this is the first box I got. These big, big boxes. I can't close it because of the way I put it away. But Pearl Soho has these boxes. They might be sold out for this season, but I, I highly suggest that if you really like to craft beautiful things that are going to become heirlooms, Pearl Soho is totally for you. It's pricey, but the stuff is exceptional quality. It really is. So with Franny being home so much, I wanted art projects that we could do even after the holidays. If these are holiday projects, we can do them through the year so that it's done for next holiday. Um, but I bought this really beautiful felt from them. And Franny's already gotten to it, so it's... Okay, so I bought packs of felt. They come in these rolls like this, these bundles. So you buy it based on the colors that you like. Do you like these colors or the blues or the rainbow or these or that? And you can buy them separately. You don't have to buy as much as I did. I, again, went ape shit. And um, there's so much stuff you can do with felt, but these are just such a high-end, beautiful felt. So I bought that. Now, when you buy these kits, these are separately. When you buy the kits... Um, they come with everything you need. So this is to make heirloom ornaments. And if you can see, um, they're felt and they have beads on them. Can you see that? And it comes with everything that you need to make them. So it comes with the felt to actually make the balls with. It comes with the templates to make the um, ornaments. It comes with five different ones. This one looks more like an ornament, you see, like that. Um, it comes with beads and paillettes and all sorts of things. Um, it gives you the corresponding um, thread that you would need that match all of the felt that you got, see? And it gives you the stuff to do the embroidery with, which Franny got to, um, and the ribbon to hang them from. Um, look what else it gave us. It gave us needles and, and, um, a water soluble pencil and like a marker for your fabric and a ruler. I mean, it gave us everything. Now, as I said, this stuff is not cheap. It is not cheap. I spent a lot of money and I, cause I wanted family heirlooms. Um, but inside you pick the ornament that you want to make see and then it literally tells you how how to mark off with the pens where to sew um, what beads to put on it and how to finish it um, so I thought this was like great now the only thing I did forget is that Franny is four so she looked at this she wanted to do it and when we sat down to do it it was really really too old for her so I had her like pick up the beads for me and keep everything straight for me and then put the stuff, you know, in, I have a little box always next to me when I'm crafting like an Ugg box and I throw the stuff in there, like, um, the scraps and garbage and stuff. It's just easy to have like, you know, how like Rachel Ray has her garbage bowl. It's kind of what I do. So she was the manager of the garbage box. Um, it also comes with the stuffing to stuff all of it. it this is really packed in there. Um, this is not going to fit in the box, so. So this was the ornaments that I bought. I also bought one more box that I want to show you, and that will be the last thing that I show you guys, so. You don't have to pee just yet. Sit tight. Okay. All right, so see, they have these really pretty boxes. This is Pearl Soho. And I just sat, it's so, so hard that I sat on the floor and used it as a little table. So we didn't get to start this one yet. I may just do this during the year with her because it's actually a lot more than it looks. Um, it's an advent calendar. And if you can see, it's a piece of felt, obviously, with pockets, but all of these are like little ornaments. So they're like little pillows and they all have on them beads and such. So I looked at this and I'm like, this is not getting done for this year. So, um, but again, you choose what you want to make and it shows you how to start it. Oh, well, this is not really a choose what you make. 
Yeah, it is. Anyway, the first thing that you have to do is like make all the numbers, then you use your sewing machine, you make all the pockets, and then you choose whatever you want to make of these little ornaments. And it shows you how to put them together and how to sew them and how to bead them. It's wonderful. Look, there's like so much to choose from. And the whole thing came with everything that you need, literally everything. I know, I sound like I work for Pearl Soho right now. Um, I remember when Pearl Soho was a tiny hole in the wall in Sullivan Street. Anyway, it gives you the template for everything. You guys can't really see it. Okay. Let's see, there's the tree. You see that? And then the numbers and all of the uh, things. And you would cut these out and use them to make your stuff. And then this is actually still intact. So the fill comes all like freeze dried into this bag, like vacuum sealed. Um, it's got tons and tons of paillettes and beads. You know, it comes with all of the needles that you need to do the sewing and your thread and your markers and everything. It just has everything. It's very, very satisfying to not have to buy everything for a project piecemeal because that's when I go crazy and I overspend for a project. I'm like, oh, I could make that for $5, but then you go into the store and you spend $50 and then it, you never make it. So it gives you all the felt you need. This is for the tree. These are for the ornaments, pretty colors. And then the white for the background, which is a nice big piece. And this is heavy, heavy felt. So if you guys are looking to make some family heirlooms, I mean, we've all got time on our hands right now. I mean, not necessarily, I guess. And a lot of people are working and I, I understand you're all juggling homeschooling and everything. Um, it also comes with a stick to hang it from at the end. So I thought this was a really, really great investment. I thought that one of the things that that I don't like about the holidays is how much I miss my grandparents. And I think we're all feeling that. I mean, I know a lot of people post online about how they don't want to celebrate certain holidays because they've lost parents, they've lost their grandparents, or God forbid, lost other people in your life, you know, children or things like that. And it can be painful. It can be a very painful time of year. It's also, a lot of people are hurting financially this year and stuff. So, you don't have to go to Pearl Soho to buy that stuff. You can go to J Michael's or Joann's, get stuff and make stuff, make some memories because I miss my grandmothers so much. I miss cooking with my grandma Josie. I miss, you know, crafting with my Mima. I'm about to cry. I just, I miss my grandfathers. You know, my, my father's father would sit at the head of the table with the, you know, um, <laughs> what was it Sergio Rossi, that big jug of wine at his, foot and he would pick it up and pour and put it back on the ground and they ate chestnuts and like things that we don't do anymore you know but that were part of my childhood um you know my poppy sam my mom's dad he could build anything so every summer you know we were out on the deck all day it was kind of like he built the picnic table he built the deck he built the this and you know you just these are things that are done with our hands, and I don't think we're really thinking so much about the impact they're gonna have on future generations. All the things that we are knitting right now, if we take good care of them, these could be things that your granddaughters, you know, or grandsons find in your drawers, and, and they smell them, and it smells like you, and they remember you. So I think what we're doing is important, and I think that we are a community that is underestimated because everyone knows someone that knits. Everyone knows someone who crochets. You'll be sitting there on the subway knitting or anywhere and someone talks to you because you're doing a needle craft because the minute that you are doing that in front of someone else, they have a memory and they remember someone that they love who did that for them. So while you guys are sitting there thinking about your holidays and how they're gonna be ruined this year and you know, you're not gonna, make all the foods that you used to make and this and that. Just remember, this is one year. Hopefully, if we get this under control in the new year, we will just remember this as a blip in our lives. But what we're creating, what we make, is gonna be with us for a really long time and it may be with future generations. So right now with Franny, Sammy, 
Sammy could give a shit. Sammy is just on the run destroying everything, but Franny's hurting and I'm trying my hardest to keep a smile on her face because she's very upset about not going to school and she's very upset about, you know, not seeing these friends that she made. And um, I just want her to enjoy herself. And she seems to like to make things. And when she's able to take something tangible and show it to my mother and father and her other grandparents and say, look, look what I made. She loves that. And I think we all love it. I think that's why we podcast. We're, we're always like, look what I made. Look what I got. Look what I bought. You know, like I'm showing you other things that people have made. Right. But like I bought this. But Christina made this, you know, and it's going to go into a blanket that may be in my family for generations. And I think that's a really beautiful thing that we are underestimating. So, again, as you all are hopefully sitting home this holiday, having very small gatherings, if any, I advise against any. Don't go on Amazon and just buy someone blind gifts unless that's what they want. Take the time, try to make something. I know it's late in the year for me to say that to you, but if you made something this year that maybe you didn't like for yourself, like a hat or something, it really could brighten someone else's day. So please just have fun with your crafting right now. You know, take it as a blessing that you're staying home and as a chance to create. And I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't know what else I want to talk about. I... I could talk to you guys for hours, even though it's just a camera I'm looking at right now. Um, I really miss you all. I miss like all of our interactions. I think missing Rhinebeck this year just hit us all straight through the heart. But now that Vogue is coming up and Vogue would have been in January, you know, maybe like five weeks from now. I just, I love Vogue. You guys know that. And so I'm starting to really feel the crunch and I'm upset about it. You know, um, I'm lucky that Gigi and Shelby live so close by because I do get to see them through the door. And, um, <laughs> I'm so very thankful to them both for always coming here because I really have not put the girls in the car and taken them anywhere. Um, this pandemic's just making me too scared. So they go on these little adventures to Target <laughs> and to Michael's. And um, if I, I, the other day I put some, some cookies on my uh, Instagram and Shelby's like, I'm out driving. And I'm like, well, come on by. I'll put a bag on the porch for you. And the baby had like a conniption. Like I opened the front door and the baby had a conniption. I had to go tend to her. And when I came back, the bag was gone. I missed seeing Shelby. I was so upset. Um, but Gigi made us two of her sweet potato pies for Thanksgiving and we fought over them. So, um, as you guys know, my husband can't eat garlic and onions. And so the safe things for him, wherever we go out, we're eating breakfast, you know, like pancakes or waffles or something or just dessert. And cause you know that, I mean, it's rare. Breakfast does have some onions in it and like hash browns and things, but for the most part, you know, you can get eggs or an omelet or this without any onions. So he eats that, but he loves dessert. He loves it because who puts onions in their dessert? So you don't have to worry about it. And, um, we had never really had sweet potato pie before. We love sweet potatoes, but when he had it last year, he had been waiting a year for this pie. And when, when Gigi told me she was giving us two, I mean, I think he like did a little dance. Like he was so excited and I got one slice. Yeah. One. He ate them. But you know what? I can't get mad at him because he doesn't get to eat normal things. That's why I'm always posting. Oh, look, I made pizza. Cause he can't, we can't just order a pizza. You know, everything has garlic and onions in it. Everything has garlic powder, or onion powder, or chives, or leeks, or, you know, it's everything. So I have to make everything. And my Mexican food is awful. <laughs> Mexican food without onions is awful. But I try. Red pepper and everything. Anyway, guys, I, um, I'm going to start Vlogmaca soon. Uh, it should start on the 11th, I think. And we'll do eight crazy days and nights of the Dernberger Jinta family, if you care to tune in on my YouTube channel. Um, and thank you to everyone that's doing 
your um, Vlogmas right now. I am love wa loving watching them. Absolutely loving it. I like seeing into people's houses. Is that weird? I love it. I love seeing like where you sit and knit, where how you organize your kitchen or this and that. I love it. Keep it going. Love it. I'm watching um, Girl Meets Yarn, you know, Mari Lisa. I'm watching uh, Christina from Chelsea Yarns and I watch Gigi. I have to start Shelby's. I usually watch Jacqueline Salem, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do hers as a marathon. Um, and I wanna watch Stress Knits and it's just great that so many of you are doing it. I think all right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. If I don't see you until Vlogmica, I probably won't. I'm going to, I'll post this podcast and then you'll see me next for Vlogmica. And then I will try to fit one in before Christmas, but I don't know. So I will be back when I am able, when the stars align and my children are taken care of. And I have done my hair and my makeup in the same day. And um, yeah. That's it. That's all I got, guys. I just, I just really hope you're all happy and healthy and making good choices right now because every time I make a choice, it seems to be like Russian roulette. It's either do this or this, which one will hurt less. So I'm looking around just to make sure I showed you everything. I know that the minute I turn this camera off, I'm going to find something. But you know what, guys? That is my problem, not yours. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday, however you celebrate, whatever you celebrate, and whoever you're going to be with. Find your happiness and go with it. All right, guys. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you soon. Wear a mask. Goodbye.